Hey everyone, welcome to church. I'm Catherine from Lifehouse in Tokyo. We are currently in a series called Reignite and hasn't it just been great? We'd love to hear what you thought, what you've been enjoying. Why don't you put in the comment section or if you're watching the in-person service, let's keep it interactive and say, yeah, come on. It's been so good. And today we are doing the last one in our series and I'm going to be talking about reignite and getting fired up in your spiritual gifts. I believe that God is going to ignite or reignite a fire in us that's going to set the world ablaze. All the places that we go, all the people that we impact are going to be impacted by the good fire of God as He impacts us. Because I love the God that we serve. He is a supernatural God who's going to move in power. And I know He's going to move in power in your life too today. That is what I'm trusting for. So a little bit about my story. I grew up in what we'd call a Christian household. I had Christian parents, but I only made a personal decision to follow Jesus when I was in university. And I remember coming to church and uh, somebody prayed for me. They prayed for me. And at that moment, when they prayed for me, I experienced physical healing in my body, God's power touching me and physically healing me, and also emotional healing in me. It was incredible just feeling God's touch just from somebody praying for me. Somebody also came and encouraged me with what we call a prophetic word. So that's a word from God that lifts and encourages us. And I remember that so clearly. It was from Ephesians 2 verse 10. And it says, you are God's workmanship created for God um, with purpose. He has good works in advance for you to do. And this was amazing to me. It felt like this was God speaking straight to me from the deep desires and questions that I had in my heart. And this word really lifted up and impacted me and impacted my life. It reignited or ignited a fire in my heart. And so I got to see as a young Christian that, yes, we have natural gifts, but you know what? We also have supernatural gifts that the Holy Spirit can work in our lives and do supernatural things and impact other people's lives in supernatural ways. It's just so exciting. And today we're going to take a look at the story of Peter and John from Acts 3 and um, what the Holy Spirit was doing and working through their lives, how their gifts were ignited and ignited up a city for Jesus. So in Acts 2, we read that Peter and John were amongst the disciples. It was the day of Pentecost and they waited. The Holy Spirit came and filled them up and amazing things happened when they ex received the gift of the Holy Spirit. They were bold witnesses and everywhere they went sharing the good news of Jesus, there were miracles happening. People were being healed, people were being set free, getting saved. It was amazing what was happening as the Holy Spirit was working in and through their lives. And so we're going to pick up from Acts 3 verse 6 to 10 and uh, Peter and John are on their way to the temple it's time for prayer and they probably went every day at three o'clock they said for uh, prayer at the temple kind of like going to church for prayer meeting and uh, they were walking to the gates and every day Outside of the gates, there sat a man who was lame from birth. He had never walked before and probably a family member or maybe a friend carried him out every day at the same time, same place, put him outside the gates of the temple and there he would beg for money. He probably couldn't earn money. He uh, wasn't able to do a trade. You know, he, he couldn't walk or anything like that. So he relied on the money uh, from begging to survive. And so every day this guy would be out here. And I wonder often actually how, how, um, how many times Peter and John had walked past this guy, how many times people had seen them and he just kind of was in the same place. But today it was going to be a different day. So Peter and John walk past him. He's holding up his hand. I'm imagining begging for money. And Peter and John stop and they look at him. And this is what Peter says. He says, I don't have any silver or gold for you. I don't have money. I have something better. I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet and began to walk. Then walking then leaping and praising God, he went into the temple with them. And all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. 
when they realized this was the lame man beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. How amazing is that? This guy, lame from birth, he experiences the touch of God, the presence of God. As Peter prays for him, he's healed. And somebody who's from the outside, who's always sat outside the gate, you know, he probably wasn't ever allowed to go into the temple. The Jewish law said that people who are lame or had deformities couldn't go into the temple. But this guy who's always been on the outside experiences the power of God. And he comes and joins them in the temple. And people see this incredible miracle that took place in this guy's life. I love hearing this story. And you know what? This story isn't just something that we can read in the Bible back then for those people, something that a Peter and a John kind of person can only do. This is for you and for me. And this is for now. God's power and His Holy Spirit is at work empowering us today as believers to impact the world in this way. God still moves in power. He's wanting to do that still now. And All believers can have spiritual gifts, these spiritual gifts. The moment that you decide to follow Jesus, put your faith in Jesus, you are given spiritual gifts that you can use to bless the world and to build up the church. We all have gifts to bless the world and build up the church. Just think about it. There's a world out there that is broken, just like that man waiting outside, lay man, lay, broken, sitting outside, and he encounters God's pe- presence. Uh, we, we want people to encounter God's presence, his power, and come and bring them inside to the family of God, into a relationship with him. And uh, this, is, this is why we have those spiritual gifts. We want people to encounter this amazing touch of God, and we get to be the vessels that God's using to do this. You know, Jesus said that we were going to do even greater things than him. He said this to his disciples. You've seen my life. You've seen what's happened in my life. You've been walking with me every day, seeing the miracles, seeing healing, seeing salvation. Well, you're going to do greater things than me. With the power of the Holy Spirit, the powering of the Holy Spirit, you're going to carry on the work that I've started. And that's what our mission is as Christians. We get to carry on the work that Jesus started here on earth in people's life. And that's through the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts that we have. It's so incredible. I really love the fact that we don't just get to share ideas or philosophies with people. Um, We get to demonstrate with how powerful God is. In Corinthians 2 verse 4, it says, we're not trying to convince people just with persuasive words, human wisdom, but a demonstration of God's power. We're not just telling people how good God is. We're letting them experience, they can experience how good and how powerful God is. So you have gifts to build and to bless. And so you would think that when the religious and political leaders, you know, in the temple see this lay man healed, you know, they would be so excited. But actually, they're the opposite. Uh, These religious and political leaders felt like threatened by this. They thought this was kind of undermining their political agendas or their personal uh, agendas. And they were really upset by this. And they told Peter and John and the people there, we don't want you to share this message about Jesus anymore. We want you to keep quiet about this. Let's keep this miracle under wraps. We don't want you to tell people about what happened here today. You need to keep silent. This is dangerous. We we need you to keep silent. But Peter, he addresses them. He talks to them about how important it is to share this good news. He wants to share this good news to them. And it says that Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, talks to this council. He addresses the religious leaders and uh, political leaders, and he says this to them in Acts 4.13. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in scriptures, and they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. How amazing is that? Full of the Holy Spirit, they're addressing the council, and these people are like, huh, We know these guys, they're just ordinary guys. Peter and John, they were ordinary fishermen. They had no special training, nothing special about them. And yet they were able to pray for somebody and see healing. They were able to see miracles. Salvation was happening. People's lives were being transformed. They were speaking with boldness and confidence, all because of the empowering of the Holy Spirit. 
And that's the same thing for us. It's We don't have the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We don't only get these gifts if we're more spiritual or uh, we know more things. We've had special training or something. Actually, uh, it just takes you to believe in Jesus. And that moment, you are given these supernatural gifts. And they are not earned. They are a grace gift from God. And God loves to do that. He takes the ordinary, the ordinary Peter and the John, the ordinary us, and He does extraordinary things through them by the power of His Holy Spirit. He likes to take the natural and do something supernatural with it. And that's the wonderful thing about grace gifts, right? Grace gifts is not something we earn. The receiver doesn't have to do anything. They just have to receive. It just costs the giver to give. And it costs Jesus. It costs Him His life. He gave everything for us so that we could receive all these incredible gracious gracious gifts. Um, And these gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's so incredible. And all we need to do is discover and unwrap our gifts. We get to discover the gifts that God has given us. And so in the story in Acts 3, we see that Peter and John, they had the gift of faith, the gift of healing. But you know, there are there are so many gifts. I wish I could share all of them. The book of Acts is full of them, but we don't have time for that today. But let's listen to what Paul has to say about the different kinds of gifts, because Paul describes them in Corinthians and he, he encourages us. He's like, discover these gifts, learn what they're about. I don't want you to be ignorant about these gifts. You should know how impactful and and powerful these gifts are. So let's take a look at some of these gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 11. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us, each of us, so that we can help each other. Our gifts make God great. And they're about helping each other. They're not about ourselves, right? To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives faith to another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether the message is from the Spirit of God or from another Spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in an unknown language, while another is given the ability to interpret interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes these gifts, and He alone decides which gifts each person should have. Wow, I love that those gifts. We saw special wisdom, words of knowledge, faith, healing, performing miracles, prophecy, discernment, tongues, interpretation. And today we don't have time to get into all of these gifts and I'm not going to get into them um, in detail. But you know what? You can find out more about these gifts. Pastor Rod does an amazing series in his Rodcast. Have you heard of the Rodcast? You can you can subscribe to his podcast called The Rodcast or you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and he unpacks each of these gifts um, over a series of weeks and just how to use them, how to discover what you have. They're incredible. I encourage you. I'm sure somebody's going to put a link. They're going to put a link below here and keep it in your memory. And after this message, why don't you go check it out and why don't you discover the gifts and find out which gifts you have or, or learn more about the gifts that you do have. So it says here that we don't get to choose the gifts. The Holy Spirit decides um, who He gives it to and when He gives it to, but we get the joy of unwrapping and discovering them. And maybe you'll find that you'll have one or two or more of these gifts. And God can use these gifts in you at different times, at different places. Maybe at certain times, for certain seasons, you'll see the Holy Spirit use you in certain gifts. So, you know, it's really great for us to, to discover our gifts and develop them. I remember getting really excited about discovering the gifts that God had given me. Uh, I have the gift of prophecy and I remember discovering how I could you know, hear God speak to me and he would give me like a Bible verse to ins- encourage someone with. And I would share this and I'd say, I feel like God really wants to encourage you with the scripture. And someone would be like, this is exactly what I've been praying about. This helps me. This lifts me. This encourages me. And, and it's so exciting because I know that that wasn't my clever thinking or, or um, you know, my specialness, but I could, I know it was the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit working in and through me. And it was able to bless somebody. 
And Adrian and I, we've enjoyed uh, discovering and growing in the gift of healing. Uh, there are many people that we've prayed for and we've seen that God heals them. Of course, there have been some people that we, we've prayed for and maybe we haven't seen healing, but you know what? We've decided no matter what, we're always going to jump at the opportunity to pray for someone for healing. So as soon as we hear somebody needs prayer for healing, we're like, I'll pray for you. So it's really exciting discovering the gifts that you had and and like it says in the scripture these are gifts to serve uh, people to help people and they make god great they don't make us great we want to make big of god and uh i love sharing stories about how uh you know, different people use their gifts because I think it stirs faith and encourages us. Uh, we get excited, we get the ignited, you know, that fire in our hearts ignited to use our gifts. Uh, I've heard some amazing stories about our youth from Tokyo. Uh, they've been uh, going to different campuses like Tachikawa and Yokohama, and they were praying and, and prophetically encouraging some of the young people there. And those people were really blessed. And it's been amazing to see those who, who did it, the, the youth, who, they were saying, you you know, I was so excited to share. I was so excited and my faith was rising as I was sharing. Because as we give the gifts, we get excited, right? We grow as Christians. It's so incredible. Another story that I really love, it's kind of a funny story, but uh, it's just, it's quite impactful. In a few years in South, ago in South Africa, when we were from, um, in South Africa, uh, there was a connect group that was meeting and they were having a time of prayer. And uh, this guy says, I know this is really strange, but as we were praying, I just felt to say the word peanuts. Does that mean something to somebody? He felt kind of weird doing it. But a lady quickly said, that is incredible. I'm really glad that you shared that, that you had the confidence to share that. Because actually, um, I was just praying and asking God to, to give me some wisdom and lead me. I've been really, really sick. And I've been doing a lot of tests with the doctor. And they're trying to find out uh, what's wrong with me. They think I'm allergic to something, but we don't quite know yet what. And I, I was praying that. And as I was praying that, uh, you felt this word. And I feel like that could be a word from God. And you know what? She got tested. She asked the doctor to check that out. And it was true she had an allergy to peanuts and this guy had a word of wisdom that's a word of wisdom that he had a word of knowledge that he had to help her to discover what was going on there just kind of sounds kind of funny but it was it was God at work God using um, people to to bless other people's lives another one of my favorite stories uh, also a time in South Africa from time we were in South Africa, there was a there's a group of people uh, that live in South Africa. They're foreigners and they're from a country called Zimbabwe, and they've come to South Africa to find better work and better jobs because uh, there are not so many jobs, opportunity, employments uh, available for them in their own country. So they come to South Africa, and at that particular time. Uh, People, there was a group of people that didn't like foreigners and they were uh, doing horrible violent acts against foreigners. They were making them feel like they were outcasts and there was just a lot of fear uh, around that situation. And we were meeting together as a church and we had many foreign people in our, our church gathering and we were praying and a young man, he, he felt that God gave him a, a tongue that he wanted to share. So he, he shared with the lead pastor and he said he feels like he wants, he's got a word to, a, a tongue that he wants to use uh, to speak and encourage. And the pastor trusts him, he knows him, he, he shares the word and it was not a language he, he knew. It, it, it just it was a strange tongue to him and then the lead pastor said does anybody have an interpretation for this tongue and it was amazing a lady stepped up and she said wow you know this young man he spoke in a language that's in Zimbabwe a special dialect and all of us speak that dialect and it was a word from God encouraging us God says that he loves us he's got a plan for us and he's going to protect us and he cares for us and we were so blown away how incredible was that this young man he couldn't speak that language he didn't know that language and he spoke a language that those people needed to hear their own heart language in their own language God spoke to them and in encourage them. <laughs> it's amazing how these gifts of the Spirit can just build up and bless people. It's so exciting when we hear that. Don't you get fired up when you hear that? Doesn't that make you uh, want to step out more boldly and trust God to use you? 
Well, actually, Paul encourages Timothy to keep that fire going, to, to, to get that fire burning hot in our lives. He says in 2 Timothy 1, 6, he reminding, he's reminding Timothy, he says, This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. So Paul is reminding Timothy, you have a gift and you need to keep refueling it, keep fanning it into flames. And this is not a rebuke. He's not saying, Timothy, your fire has gone out. He's actually encouraging him that this is what we all need to do in our lives. With all of our gifts, we need to continue to add f- fuel. It's not something that we stop doing. We just continue, continue to fan those gifts into flame. And as we add more fuel, you know, uh, uh, it's going to grow in impact and usefulness in this world for God's kingdom. And so how can we keep the fire burning? You know, fire needs fuel. And I think God's word, reading the Bible and journaling is great fuel. That's how we can, um, you know, build up faith in our hearts to trust God, what he can do in other people's lives. When I read uh, the Bible and I see what God did, I get excited and I'm thinking, God, I want to see that today. I want to see that in my family, in my community. It stirs up faith in my heart. It helps me to know what I can trust God for, what he can do. Also, when we're journaling, I've often gotten some verses in my journaling time and I thought, this has encouraged me and I know somebody else that I can share the scripture with. So uh, the word of God is like fuel that keeps this fire igniting and burning in our hearts, in our spirits. Fire also needs oxygen. And for me, that's like the breath of God. The breath of God, the Holy Spirit is often spoken of as like wind, as a breath, as oxygen. And we need the Holy Spirit to come fill us and fill us again and empower us and empower us again so that we can step out and use our gifts. So this is not just a one-time thing that we are filled with the Holy Spirit or empowered by the Holy Spirit. We can continually ask the Holy Spirit to empower us. In fact, this is one of my prayers. Every day I pray, Holy Spirit, will you come and fill me? Will you come and empower me today? Help me to see the opportunities that, that there are around me to bless and love and serve you and people. So a simple thing like that is is helping to to ignite, to reignite those gifts that the Holy Spirit can can use in our lives. And also fire coals get hotter when they're around other coals. If you take one coal out of the fire, it's going to grow cold. It's, you know, it's it's not as impactful. But when you put that coal together with other coals, the fire gets hotter. There's something that happens when we're together in community, right? I think this speaks about community. We've always meant to be a part of community. And that means, you know, getting stuck in your local church, planted in your local church, serving and growing in your church, joining community connect groups or Bible connect groups. Because I think that's a great way when we we can learn from other people. We grow together. We need each other to grow. And I still think that no one person is the answer or the superhero in using our gifts. But each person putting their gifts together, uh, we're able to have a greater impact building the kingdom, building the trusting God to build his kingdom and blessing the world around us, impacting and reaching the world around us. So it's so important to, to be a part of community. I also think that when we get to share our stories together, it, it, it um, reignites our hearts. Whenever I hear stories of somebody stepping out and God doing something supernatural, I'm like, oh, I, w- I want to do this too. I, I want to do this too, right? We need to hear these stories that happens in a, in a group. So I just loved what Pastor Rod was encouraging us when we first started this series. He was saying that, you know, if God sees a low wick, he never wants to blow it out. He just wants to to fan it back into flame. So I hope this is encouraging you. God wants to fan that flame, get hotter and brighter. Maybe you've stepped out and tried to use your gift and you've hit some discouragement or disappointment, uh, challenges along the way. Sometimes we forget about our gifts or maybe you didn't even know you had a gift. Well, I love what Uh, the disciples do when they face opposition or challenging times this is what they do in times of disappointment it says in Acts 4 29 verse 31 this is after they've been told to keep quiet or they're going to be in trouble it says they prayed this and now O Lord hear their threats 
and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And after this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they preached the word of God with boldness. I love that in the face of challenges or opposition, don't back down, don't be discouraged, reignite. They asked the Holy Spirit to come and fill them again and they were trusting for even greater supernatural signs and wonders and and opportunities to to do great things for God. Isn't that amazing? And I want to encourage you today, wherever you find yourself, maybe you don't didn't even know you had a gift to use, or maybe you haven't used it in, in a while. I want to pray that God is going to use you in a powerful way. So let's open up our hearts. I know that God, He can touch you. It doesn't matter if we're separated by a, a, a computer screen, a, a TV screen, a camera screen. The power of God can encounter you right now. The Holy Spirit can fill you up again. So if that's you and you want to trust God to come and reignite, to come and uh, stir up the gifts of the Holy Spirit in you. You want to discover your gifts. Let's open our hands as a sign of receiving and pray together. Thank you, God, that you give us gifts. You give all believers gifts and you give them graciously. We don't have to earn them or deserve them. I pray, Holy Spirit, you come reignite us. Come and fill us again. Come and stir up the gifts in people. Help people to discover and unwrap the gifts that you have for them. Help them to step up um, with boldness and confidence and see many people people blessed and built up through your gifts in Jesus name. Amen. And maybe you're listening to all of this and maybe you can relate to that man who was on the outside, that lame man on the outside, it feeling like you're, he, he was uh, uh, you know, in a broken place. He couldn't, he couldn't get to Jesus. But I want to tell you that Jesus wants to invite you in. He wants to bring you in. The invitation is there. He wants to bring healing and restoration and salvation to your life. He's coming to take you out from the out from the the, the gate entrance and bring you inside into a relationship with Him. And all it takes is for you to say, I want to follow you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus, that you love me, that you died for me, and you have a plan for me. And if that's you today, you want to follow Jesus, or you want to follow Him again, Let's pray this prayer together. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. (laughs) It's amazing if you've prayed that prayer. I'm so excited for you. The fun starts now. The journey starts now. It was so great that you joined us today. I'm really trusting that we're going to hear amazing testimonies of God igniting and reigniting the fire in you and all of us going out into our family places, our communities, our church, and seeing the good news and the power of Jesus on display for the world to see. Thank you for joining us. See you again next week.